In the past several uh, months, I've been putting out a series of uh, policy briefs through CG on the, the crisis in Ukraine and, and the particular aspect of it, which is the longstanding uh, economic malaise in Ukraine and the efforts of the international community to help get Ukraine back on a sustainable economic path. Uh, so far, the IMF um, has uh, been involved in two lending arrangements. Uh, the first started last April, and shortly after that was approved, I put out my first policy brief. That one was looking primarily at the projections that were made, the projections for the economy that were made in the uh, staff report in support of the program and um, at the financing that had been put together and ha what form the financing had taken. Um, my basic conclusions in that brief were that the projections were quite substantially too optimistic for a country that had long-standing and deep economic problems, but also was a country in active conflict. So projections for uh, output growth, for inflation, and for uh, basically its financing needs over the course of the next year to two years. My second point in that was that I thought a great deal more financing was needed than had been provided and that it should fall not just to official creditors but some of the private creditors should be, as we say, bailed in. That is, there should be a standstill on repayment to uh, private creditors. The second uh, brief I've just put out, and this is commenting on a new lending arrangement that the IMF has. The old lending arrangement, the one that started in April of 2014, went badly off track. The government was unable to implement the policies and reforms that had been agreed, and the economy did substantially worse than what the fund had expected. So effectively, the fund wiped the slate clean and started the new lending arrangement in March of this year. Uh, so I've looked again at the papers and in a sense distilled the main messages that come out of them and interpreted some of the problems that I think are going to arise in the next year to two years um, in the course of implementing this program. First of all, uh, as I said before, the projections uh, that the IMF put together in March of 2015 are substantially less optimistic than they were in April of 2014. So they've kind of moved back toward reality a little bit more. I think they still have a way to go before they get to very realistic um, projections, but at least for the next year or so, I, they seem to have uh, their sights on an appropriately um, realistic view of what's going to go on in the Ukraine economy. Second, uh, there is a substantially larger recognition of a substantially larger financing need now than they had expected in 2014. And they have now not only put substantially more IMF money into the program, but called on official creditors, the United States, several European countries, Canada, to uh, add additional financing and they have asked private sectors to become involved in the exceptional financing. What that means is that uh, private creditors over the course of the next two months are being asked to negotiate uh, um, a restructuring of their debts, of their bonds, the, bo the Ukrainian bonds that they're holding, so that they effectively give uh, Ukraine debt relief. Uh, looking forward, I think there are going to be many challenges uh, in the very uncertain path of Ukraine back to any sort of normalcy. Obviously, many of them are going to be political, uh, and, but there are also going to be a number of very serious economic policy reforms, particularly addressing very deep-seated corruption, getting the fiscal um, accounts back onto a sustainable path, and ultimately um, dealing with a very large, uh, outstanding external debt. So I think there's going to be plenty of room for further commentary over the next uh, year or so. And as, these, as the fund continues to take steps on this process, I will um, uh, continue to put out policy briefs that effectively explain where we stand with Ukraine.